This video will be an overview of the mColor software. We're going to talk about uh, the reasons we want to use mColor software versus the printer driver, what the mColor software can do, what it looks like, how to start it, how to stop it, and, and different things like that. There are more detailed videos to show each one of the actions and more in-depth into the different things that we can do with it in subsequent videos. So the first thing we're going to do is understand that the mColor software is a three-part system. It's a server, a RIP, and a client. The server allows the RIP and the client to communicate, which will then communicate with your printer. In order to start the software, what we'll do is we'll double-click on the mColor server icon on your desktop. And this launches the server, which will immediately minimize itself. And then it will launch the RIP. And the RIP is more of a configuration window at this point. Uh, you don't have to do anything with it. We've done all that work for you. So we'll minimize this when it starts up uh, manually. And then we'll deal with it, uh, the client at that point. So we'll just go ahead and minimize this. And then we'll open up the client by double clicking on the M color icon there. Now you'll notice that a lot of the workflows here are red. We're just waiting for the RIP and the client to register to one another and then you'll see them turn green. So this is the client and we'll go over the what the client has. Now there's basically three panes in the client. There's your workflow pane which shows all the workflows. Now these are workflows that we've created for you. Uh, to give you a start. You can use these workflows, you can edit these workflows, you can delete these workflows. There's no maximum number of workflows you can have, there's no minimum other than just one, uh, at least one workflow. This is what your workflow basically looks like. This is the steps that are going to be in your workflow. You'll see they change based on what we've added into the workflows. These are where your, this is where your job list is for each individual workflow. Every job in that workflow will show here in the job list. If I want to edit these workflows, I can hit the pencil icon. And at this point, I can do things like I can change the name of the workflow. If I don't like the way it was named, I can add a pause here. I can generate thumbnails so that when I'm using the web client or the, the uh, GUI on the on the printer interface and using the RIP there, I will get a thumbnail of what I'm looking at. And then I can add and drag in different pieces that I want to add into these workflows. Adding a job is very a very easy process. You bring up a folder like I have with different types of work in it. And you grab a file you want to print and you just drag it into this area here or you could drop it on the name of the workflow that you want if it's not currently highlighted. And you'll see it show up down in the, in the job list there. Let's go across this uh, top menu bar here. This shows you all the jobs in the system regardless of workflow. So if you had a, a job that you printed earlier and you've got a client that wants to uh, reprint a job, you could go to this icon here Go over here, type in the name of the job you're looking for, and it'll filter it out. This is your edit workflow icon. So you can edit or enter. You can either enter or exit the workflow editor. This is the universal play button. So if I want to move, make it move past a pause, that will go to either the next step or if there's no pauses, to the end. If I wanted to pause a job that's currently running, I could hit the pause button. This allows me to restart the job in a different workflow or in the same workflow. Um, this is good as if you uh, realize that you dropped a job in, say, the landscape uh, workflow and you should have dropped it in the portrait. You don't have to delete it and redrop it. You could just move it over to the workflow you wanted to use. And this is similar to that, only it would copy it. So you would have a multiple copies of that job in the system and this would be good for if you want to test different ways to output the job whether it's different paper profiles or, or what have you and this will delete the job the trash can this is our spot color icon so if I have a, a job with a spot color adjustment in it I could choose that to bring up my spot color adjustment tool and as I said earlier 
Uh, there is a very detailed video on spot color adjustment that you can view to get a, a good view of that. This is my information window. This gives us information uh, about the job when it was when it was uh, started, what has happened to it uh, over the course of the time it's been in the system. So this is a, a link to the Memjet toolbox. If I want to look at the toolbox, I just select that icon there and it brings up the toolbox in my web browser and there's our tool. Another one of the ways I can add a job into the system is I can go new job and I can look for my file folder and select a page and then choose a workflow and hit open and it will add that job into the workflow that way as well. Uh, another thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and log out here real quick because what we can do is uh, to log in, and this is a this is a very common question for our support team. If I want to log in, what how do I log in? Uh, user or administrator, capital U or capital A. There is no password. It's important to remember that we've got a lot of calls, people calling in saying, "I don't know my password. I can't get in the system." Uh, this is the server, and then I always choose automatic login and remember password, so I don't have to do this every single time I log in and out hit OK and it brings back into the system. I can make a new workflow uh, here just by going new workflow and I can give it a name and we'll call this one test. Okay and again we've got videos that go over this in greater detail. I'm going to go ahead and bring in, I can bring in the different pieces of what I want to do in this workflow. Choose my configuration, choose my paper profile, I'm going to go ahead and put a pause there. Now, what is I can auto release if no spot colors. If I want to um, have a spot color adjustment in every single workflow, and even if I don't have spot colors, if I choose that, it won't pause. If it registers, there's no spot colors in it, it'll send it right to the printer. And then, of course, under hot folder, I want to go ahead and generate thumbnails. And I like to pause after because what I like to do and how I want to run the system is minimal workflows. And then I will affect each job as I go. So I would drop a job into the system and I would right click on it once it's paused and I could edit the job's workflow. And from here I could say, well, this is going to print on a commercial envelope. And this is going to have uh, just line art and text. And that way I can affect each job individually. Or what you could do, hit yes and let it go to the system. I could make a workflow for each possible configuration that I might run across. Say, envelopes, landscape, high speed, plain paper. Envelopes, portrait, high speed, plain paper. Envelopes, landscape, commodity, high speed. Envelopes, landscape, commodity, best quality. And, and along the like of that. Or you can have minimal workflows and make those changes based on the needs of that particular job. There is no right or wrong way to do it. It just is completely dependent on how you want to run your system. Other things I can do when I right click on a job is I can flag a job. Flagging a job uh, takes away my ability to delete that job. So you see that's grayed out there. If I right click on here, uh, my delete is uh, grayed out here as well. So this is good if you have a, a, a standing job that you're going to do a lot of the time and you're going to print them every week or every month or every quarter um, and you like the way it's set up color wise and everything you flag that job it can't be deleted now the only way it can be deleted is if someone comes in here and unflags the job and then it can be deleted okay other things i can do here is i can go to output options this is where i would run a, run an envelope through get the color right get my positioning right and then I need a certain number of that envelope, and I would type that number in here, 250, 500, 100, however many I needed. Uh, if I needed to rerun pieces of the job, say uh, I had a mailing and I lost an envelope or I got eaten by a, an inserter or something like that, I could come back in here, figure out what page I needed, and then output the pages that I needed. 
Outputting first page is a good way to take a multi-page document and just output that first page of that document for testing purposes. Or you could do the same thing here, give me from one to one. If you're running, uh, say, cell sheets or something like that, eight and a half by 11, you can tell it to collate or uncollate. You can choose that. You can reverse page order, and that's good if you're going to, say, do a mailing, and it's gonna have to be trade. So you want to reverse page order so it prints the last page first so you can put the five envelopes into that tray in the in the proper order okay so that would be output options uh, i can restart a job here same as i can do it up here same with copy here same with delete and of course the graphic editor which we have a full video on how we use the graphic editor When I want to shut the system down at the end of the day, I will, first thing I want to do is go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and shut off the client and then bring up my server and my rip. Now the server controls the rip. It's going to start with the server and close with the server. If I try to close the rip without closing the server, it's going to let me know that it's being managed by SOAR, which is the protocol we use. Are you sure you want to quit? And you say yes. It's going to quit the rip, but then it's going to start it right back up immediately. Okay. So you can continue to do this, and eventually the communication link will be broken. The bad thing that happens at that point is the next time you go to launch the server, since that communication link has been broken, it will not launch the rip. So you'll never get anything to your printer. So you want to make sure that when you shut the system down, you don't shut the rip off, you shut off the server and that will shut both the server and the rip off together. That is an overview of the M-Color software.